Good evening and welcome to the March 15, 2021 Ordinance Review Committee. This meeting and all who participate in it with us on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. Okay, first up on the agenda, Laura, roll call, please. Sure. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor Thorpe. Here. Member Peck. Here. And Member Napolitano. Here. Perfect. Um, next up is public comment. I'm going to save this speech. Laura, is there anyone? Oh, I see Alex Jarrett. So Alex already knows the role. So uh, you can let Councillor yes. Jarrett. Oh, he's, he's actually has his hand raised. There you go. Yep. <laughs> okay. Ready for me? Yes. All right. Hello, everyone. Great to see you all. Um, I uh, just wanted to uh, appreciate the committee for uh, delving into many of these topics, uh, even though you know there were a number that you ultimately could not recommend for, for change. Um, but uh, as the sponsor of the amendment to the resolution that encouraged the focus on the marginalized communities, I was very glad to see that this work uh, undertaken. Um, so as I said, you know, I understand there, there are many topics and potential ordinance changes that are outside the scope of the legislative branch. Um, and also that uh, I was looking at the draft of the report, which I understand is just the, the first draft of it. Uh, but I wanted to offer a few suggestions. Um, I wanted to suggest that there be a broader discussion in the report about the topics that you covered uh, to provide more context. I think this will assist the council, the mayor, and the community in understanding the work that needs to happen on levels other than uh, with our local legislative body. Um, another was uh, to well, go over what the expected impacts of the ordinances that you are recommending. So, you know, why you're making the recommendations that you are. Um, and then um, just a minor word change. Uh, I would suggest using historically instead of traditionally. Um, just in my mind, you know, if it's a tradition, it's a tradition we want to change. Um, <clears throat> so that that's one suggestion. And then also uh, to suggest defining um, historically marginalized communities um, so that the reader has an idea of what groups you considered uh, in, in the process. So um, good, uh, great work, really appreciated. Again, all the work that you're doing and um, thanks for considering those. And very much looking forward to the final report. Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. And I don't believe there is any other further this public comment. Moving on now to the approval of minutes for March 1st, 2021. I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes of March 1st, 2021. And I'll second it. Motion made by Councillor Nash, seconded by Councillor LaBarge. Okay, any comments suggested, recommended changes? Um, Megan, I can't see you. Yes, you can't see me, but you know my hand is raised. Yes. <laughs> and minutes yes. are mentioned. Okay, so in the section, ordinances review for impact on marginalized communities, probably page three. Um, the paragraph starts, for two families by right, there is concern that the ordinance may spur more building of larger and thus, instead of more, it's less less market rate affordable homes in the short term. So just that one more change. And I believe on page six, I think, right before the recommendations, um, my, <clears throat> so the, Right before that, um, Councillor Nash said that he said that he's supportive of house, having a narrative around the recommendation. What page is that on, Megan? I, it's for me, it's page six, but it's right before that heading recommendations. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, 
so which is very much in line with uh, I think what Council Garrett just said. Um, and I believe I'm sorry, Megan. The sentence reads now, Councillor Nash said he would like to have language to that effect be part of yeah. the narrative. Is that what I think you're there's talking one about? more sentence after that. It's like he's he's supportive of having a narrative around the recommendations. You know what? I'm missing that sentence in my that's weird. And no, I, I just I watched a tape like a, I don't know, more than a week ago. Okay, so we're so we're just adding a sentence. Is that yeah, what you're adding okay, that. could could you could you repeat the sentence one more time? Was the, is supportive uh, of is supportive of having a narrative around our recommendations. Okay. That sounds like something I would have said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did not put words in your mouth. And I, apparently I did I say it. I and I was planning to say that again this meeting. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, so that's, that's all I have. Okay, Laura, did you get that? I did. Okay. So with that, those few changes, Laura, we're going to get a roll call on sure. the approval. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Member Peck. Yes. And Member Napolitano. Yes. Okay. Mm. Moving on, final disposition of topics already reviewed. Bucket number one, housekeeping changes and ordinances reviewed for impact on marginalized communities. Laura, can you get Yeah, let me screen share one second. I think I made one addition to the housekeeping to maybe add the um, the one about the um, handy accessible parking mm -hmm. that was not on it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Here it is. Let me scroll down. That's the only change from last mm -hmm. week is just adding. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, under section chapter 312 vehicles in traffic. And I was gonna just attach the text that um, attorney Seawald had drafted because it's too much text to put in these boxes. Is that all right? If I was just gonna say see attachment yeah. there and attach the revised text. Okay. I don't know if there's a different way attorney Seawald's doing it, but. I haven't worked on that yet. Okay. Members, I know we went over this at the last meeting. Any comments, thoughts, suggestions? Yeah. I can't see everyone. I'm on my, now my screen went totally blank. Question. Megan. Um, since we have a few meetings left, if we do discover that there are changes to be made, we could still bring them up in the subsequent meetings, right? Because I, I can't promise yeah. that. Okay. So what I could do for the next two, you know, next, we have two meetings left, is to keep this format on for the next two meetings. Mm -hmm. okay. The other the the other changes that I didn't see anywhere, and uh, as I said, I haven't really gone back through the housekeeping changes, but um, among the changes that were not um, uh, recommended were those that Jackie Balance brought forward. I didn't see those on any uh, uh, on any list. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether the committee wants to, uh, to me to add those to the not recommended column, particularly the limit it to 1400 square feet. And um, um, so. That should be included. Um, she withdrew one of hers, right? Herself, am I? Did well, she, she not be? Right. Um, so you, you would think that would belong on house key number one or the? No, no, those are, those are definitely, I, I don't know where those belong actually. I'm not sure that that um, the, you know the the issue for for her was that uh, um, you know that these that the ordinances needed to uh, 
relieve um, historically marginalized communities. Uh, it was more like you know the neighborhood wanted to see what they wanted to see. Um, so about having a cap on the square footage of some of the new housing? Right, because she thought that the recent developments were just out of scale with the neighborhood. I don't, I don't I'm not sure what her motivation was, but I know that there was, uh, uh, there's been a lot of, a lot of issues about the development in the neighborhood. Uh, maybe it is, you know, part of that concern. I don't know. Should I put that on number three? I, I wonder, did that happen February 22nd, which I haven't transcribed yet? Because as I was transcribing, when someone presented something, that's when I was adding it to the spreadsheet. I'm wondering if that's why I missed. Yeah, I think she visited that, that meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's why it didn't make it to the spreadsheet, but um, certainly. So would it be similar to uh, maybe Carmen Juno's uh, idea of creating ordinance around um, reducing rental fees or transfer rental fees, similar to that, something in that phase, or or is this like a amending the one of the two families by right ordinance? Mm -hmm. I think she was talking about single family residences because that was the issue that we can't regulate single family residences in that way. Um, I think we have those emails, Laura. Yeah. We do. Yeah. It's all in her emails. Yeah. So we'll include that. Okay. So I have a suggestion that um, we all have Jackie's email that uh, that for our next meeting, we, you know, review all of that and then figure out where we're gonna, what we're gonna do with it. How's that? Cause I'm here, I, if it, it was, I think it was the February meeting that she mm -hmm. was there and part of yes, the, the bind was that those ordinance was, were actually on their way to council um, and I think they'd already been to planning board. So they, the, the hear, I, I don't know if the hearing was open or closed at that point. <laughs> I think so, if I can recall, Counselor, that Alan did mention in regards that it was on its way mm -hmm. to planning at that point for the hearing. And we had all those ordinances that were coming up. Right. So I think, I think we're hitting where she was thinking. Her first email appears to have been to Laura on February 7th. Yep. I don't actually have the, uh, uh, Laura forwarded it, but it doesn't have the attachment. Uh, okay. Laura forwarded it at least to me on, on uh, and Wayne Feiden on the 8th. And I can see, I've got the minutes of the February 22nd minute meeting. I can see in her public comment, she was talking about the fit test concept that she mm -hmm. had forwarded to us. So um, that was what her verbal presentation was about. So I guess she was still advocating for that at that point anyways. Um, so. So had we, cause we did weigh in at one point around that those the that particular package and that um was that was Jackie's statement before or after we had made that vote if I'm before. not mistaken yeah right before mm -hmm. okay now look at the grid here <laughs> but it makes sense to be added to the spreadsheet is something that was reviewed and discussed. Mm -hmm. But do you? Yeah, I, I would go the agenda next. 
Yeah, I think, yeah, with the agenda for next time and maybe, you know, by then, Laura, you might have the minutes. Do you think that would be possible? I think so, yes. <laughs> and then we could review the minutes specifically around that, That's that true. discussion so we could get ourselves all up to date and then. Right, right. And then we can really have at it and we'll figure out what to do with it. But she was basing her her approach on um, on what she understood Alan Verson's comment to be at the hearing on the two families at the planning board, which Carolyn says she misunderstood what, what Alan said, but here nor there. Um, so apparently she was at the city council on the 18th at public comment. I believe she was. Yes. She's been a regular attendee and diving deeper and deeper into our zoning. She's, she'll be well prepared for our next zoning revisions committee. <laughs> Maybe she'll be put on the planning board, who knows? You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> she would in the Nash administration. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And there won't be one. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't see anyone. Any further comments? I can't see. So this is on, we're speaking to the first spreadsheet. First bucket. The yep. Housekeeping. Yep. Before we move on to the second. Still there? We're still here. Are you? I'm trying to figure, I'm Are like, we ready? Do you want me to screen share the second? Are we done with the first? Yeah. Screen. Thanks, Alan. I can't see any. It's like, wow. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Uh. Okay. And everyone's see. faces blocks the right hand column of it for me. <laughs> So I have two to speak to here and when every, whenever Councilor Thor would, would like me to report. That would be good, Councilor Nash, go right ahead. Okay, so the two that are on this list, you know, let me see if I can pull up my, the two things I wanna speak to, oh, come on, where is it? There's my notes. All right, so there was the towing of vehicles, impeding snow remo removal operations, right. um, and also the uh, proposal to expand notification um, uh, for uh, zoning map changes. So I, um, I was at the planning board last week. So we referred the, we, we asked that these go to the planning board for discussion and uh, that, um, Carolyn, you know, set up for me to be there. I spent about an hour in the meeting with the planning board um, discussing these different um, uh, proposals. And um, so I'm in the process of pulling together a report that I would like to submit and we could just fold into this. Um, um, but if you, I think it might be helpful. So in the report, I'd like to make recommendations, but I don't want them coming from me. I want them coming from the committee. So um, I just like to lay out some of the ideas that were uh, discussed and, um, and then maybe we can build some consensus here. So um, I'll start with the towing of vehicles. Um, that uh, That discussion was brought to us by uh, Councillor Foster, uh, there was a resident out in uh, Ward 2 who, who had her vehicle towed. Uh, she didn't have enough space to park on the property where she rented. She ended up having to park on the street and woke up the next day and her car was gone and um, in, uh, had been towed to uh, the Ernie's uh, storage lot and she had to head down there to get it. And this has been an ongoing thing over the years that it tends to happen with people new to the city and, um, and that we had discussed bringing it to planning board with the idea of that uh, maybe there is something in our zoning 
possibly having to do with the parking requirement that could be looked at or just parking ideas in general, because that's, you know, that's where those decisions uh, often rely um, around uh, property use. Um, we, get to, we get control, council gets control over the public way, uh, planning board has some say over the way uh, 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 private property is, is used. Um, so ideas shared by the planning board members. Um, let's see, Carolyn uh, pointed that pointed out that um, the data shows that the city, um, are, there are less cars per unit in the urban core and, um, and that the city is not interested in encouraging more paved or parking area. So she kind of framed the discussion by saying we don't want to make more parking lots. Um, that she also mentioned how this often occurs around pre-existing non-conforming properties. What that means is it's the older properties where, uh, the, where the parking requirement often is not, is not the, the requirement that we have is not in effect. So if you have a, an apartment that requires two parking spaces, you know, per the zoning and you're building it now, you need to do that. But if, you know, if it's a legacy uh, 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 property, you can get away with having less uh, parking on site. Um, ideas that came out of the planning board were um, putting together some seasonal messaging around snow and parking restrictions as well as the clearing of snow. That's gonna be reflected in the next one as well. And I, I thought that was a great idea. It's like, oh yeah, you know, maybe every fall, you know, like October, November, and this could come out of the, you know, the executive branch, but we could all pick up on it, which is just putting out the message that be prepared. You're gonna to have to shovel your sidewalk and make sure you don't park your car on the street. Um, so that was one idea. Um, another idea was a reduced or free fee for first time offenses. Generally, once people get towed, they don't get towed again. And um, so the idea was if we're really uh, interested in doing that, that the city figure out a way to make that first offense reduced or for free. Um, and this would just apply to the the fines that are imposed by the parking department, right? They would still have the towing fee. Well, they, so the planning board was not quite into the details that, uh, the way we have, we have been. So they were talking more in general. This was like, how's this for an idea? Um, so yes, I think that we would have to go into the weeds and then say, it would be the police department. It would be on the mayor to look into ways to reduce that fee um, because I, I believe they negotiate some the arrangement with Ernie's to to tow people. Mm -hmm. um, all right, where's my list again? Um, one of the planning board members vehemently asked for more parking of enforcement across the city. <laughs> uh, um, Another came up with the idea of a renter's folder with important information. That's exactly something we've already talked about. And to hear it coming from them made me just think, oh, we got to, we, we have the idea. We just need to figure out a way, who are we going to recommend, you know, take this, this piece over. Um, I did talk to those community action folks who came in for uh, community resources a few months ago, and they weren't too keen on it. But I, I think we, this idea of having a renter's folder somewhere that everybody can just click on and there it is, snow emergencies, renter's rights, all of those things, you know. Um, yeah. I have to keep switching between looking at you guys and then back at the page here. Um, um, an idea of gorilla or pop-up parking lots. So here, the idea here was um, that 
when there's a need that it actually, it's like a neighborhood type of effort that neighbors would say, oh, the parking snow emergencies are gonna happen. If anybody needs a parking space, you can pop in my driveway, I have an extra space. Or that somebody has some space in their yard um, that you know could accommodate another vehicle, not year round, but just for parking snow emergency events, that that was an idea. Um, let's see, all right, that's not the pop, all right. Um, there was questions about who enforces snow storage or holds landlords accountable for failing to meet parking requirements. Um, I imagine that's the building department, but I'm not sure that there's a lot of attention paid to that. Um, um, the, the last idea, which I, I thought was also very interesting is asking the NPD where such towing occurs and better communicate with the residents in that area. So I think what we would, we'd say, get rid of you so I can see you guys again, that, um, that the towing is gonna happen in, you know, in specific neighbors. It's not happening on West Farms Road. You know, it's gonna be happening on, you know, particular streets around the city. And that um, by getting that data, we could really figure, we could figure out where we need to concentrate the, the outreach. They, I thought that made a lot of sense. Um, so um, I keep pulling up too many screens. Um, so anyway, the, here's possible actions that I just wanted to throw out with you guys. I've kind of already mentioned them. Is asking the executive to ask the police department to consider reducing their fee, which is something that Megan was just talking about. Um, the other is the executive working with the vendor to ne negotiate a less costly fee um, because I, you know, it, I think that would be helpful. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that fee is, the fee seems pretty, I mean, they, they make 150 bucks every time they tow a vehicle. Um, maybe that's a sweet deal. Maybe it's not. I, I don't know the towing industry. Um, then the last thing is, oh, uh, finding a community organization um, to include, to create that digital folder so we can in include this, um, this parking information. So um, my, my understanding was that the there was a $50 fee that was um, claimed by the NPD. And then there was an additional, mm -hmm. I think it was an additional $100 that the towing company got for actually doing the towing. I think it's more like, I think the NPD number was more like 30. 25. 25, 25 thank you. And, and then the, and the bulk of it is, is paying for the tow and the storage. But the, the, the administrative fee is in the executive branch. That's not an ordinance. That's in the executive branch. So that's determined, you know, on department by department basis. So that would be something you could urge the mayor to, to do is to have that uh, fee waived for the first tow. Um, as long as I've, I've got the floor, I just want to make, I just want to provide some other information in this regard. The zoning ordinance in, in urban B and urban C uh, which are the core, you know, downtown residential districts, require one space per thousand square feet and no more than two spaces required by you, by, uh, for a unit. So it doesn't matter how many bedrooms you have in a unit, you don't, you're not required to have more than two spaces. So if you have a three bedroom apartment and there are, you know, six people living there, which, you know, I don't know if people still do that, but that's what we did when I was in college. Um, the, uh, um, you know, you only need two spaces. Um, in the urban, uh, which one is this? Hang on. Uh, I think it's the urban B. Um, you can only have two cars in the front setback, two spaces in the front setback, which means you need somewhere else other than the, the front yard and driveway to park the, more than two cars. So those are the limitations. 
Um, so that's all I wanted to let you know. And I, I agree with Carol, and it probably is a problem more associated with older, established, in town, um, non conforming uh, buildings with, with uh, rental units. Because at least you're going to have two, you know, for most units, you're going to have two parking spaces. Right, for the newer units. And that's, and we're not, you know, we're, we're not going to get complaints from, you know, the O'Connell development and people not having places to park. You know, it's, it's not the new places that this, we get the concerns about this. Although you have places like uh, the new places on Pleasant Street where there are no, there's no parking. The, you know, the affordable housing on Pleasant are, you know, large buildings with no parking whatsoever. Um, and, you know, which was, of, of course, a concern to the owner of Union Station because he, he was concerned that, you know, the, the units would use the parking space at Union Station to, uh, to park. So, so there are exceptions to that rule. And I looked into that, Alan, and um, that um, I haven't heard any complaints from people feeling displaced. Um, and um, I didn't hear that from um, Councillor Shara while she was the, the ward rep for, for where the um, Live 155 is. And I haven't heard that from Councillor Thorpe either. And we, we, we didn't hear any complaints with the TPC. And that, um, yeah, I've, I've always been really surprised at that, that, um, that some people did lose parking in the, um, the former depot lot. Uh, but I, I guess they expected that to happen. And so, I mean, it, I think most people who moved into that building uh, were informed that there they weren't going to have parking. And um, that was really clear. And the, the outcome is they haven't needed parking. So um, anyway. Um, okay. So th that's, that's my report on the the parking aspect. Um, and, um, and so I'd like to, I'll draft something up and I'd like to make those last three recommendations that I went through. And if you wanna to add to that, or we can amend things a little, letter, a little better next week. Looks like Meg, Megan has something. Else. Megan. So this was, a, this ordinance about the towing was the one I brought up in February 1st meeting because it was, um, it's a curious case. I mean, obviously in spite of a lot of very thoughtful, interesting discussion, but you know, right now I'm, I'm trying to think about how we would fit that into our report, which Attorney Seawald has um, organized into um, positive and negative recommendations. Mm -hmm. Because this actually, when it was brought to us by Councillor Foster, um, she wasn't really recommending so much changes to this ordinance or she wasn't recommending you know, a, a new ordinance or, but so I'm not really quite sure how we would how treat this. Perhaps I need to, perhaps I need a third category of, you know, ordinances, subjects recommended for study. Exactly. I think that's um, we're that's. Um, I think that would be really valuable in this report. Um, you know, also would in that category might be signs, which was brought, which were brought to us by uh, mm -hmm. Councilor Jarrett, I believe, and is something that we need to study and. Uh, uh, right. has a lot of political issues that need to be resolved mm -hmm. um, in the where and how many, um, you know, because some people like, you know, want unlimited signs and other people just, you know, want to limit the number and how close to the road, and that sort of thing. So, you know, and these are problems that need to be addressed through a combination of, sounds like, um, agency mm -hmm. actions, mayoral or actions and not 
through ordinances necessarily. Right. So. Um, but signs would be an ordinance. Would be something that you know the uh, uh, that the council would have the authority to adopt. So. Um, and just on the parking, one other thing about reducing the cost, at least of the towing, if I'm not mistaken, and I haven't checked with our procurement officer, but I think this goes out to bid and we, we pick the lowest responsible bidder. And, you know, it's, you know, so I, I don't want to think that we can lean on the, uh, the vendor to reduce the costs if, if it's competitively bid. Okay. Well, that's, that's what I was expecting, Alan, and I figured we, but I'm putting it in there as something to be looked into, so. So should we vote to put that into a, um, to go to Attorney Seawald as something to, for further study, would you? Could I ask just one question before we do? Yeah. I mean, is there, um, is there a way to consider or has the issue of con taking into consideration somebody's capacity to pay um, when thinking about these things? I mean, because certainly how this affect this will affect somebody who makes $30,000 a year way differently than somebody who makes $150,000 a year, right? As with most fines, right? Are you expecting people to fill out the financial financial disclosures to determine this because somebody who makes thirty thousand dollars a year but has you know has a trust fund uh or you know income from a trust fund is going to be you know impacted differently than somebody who doesn't have a trust fund so it's more than just how much income somebody has but it's also the assets um how do you consider um you know if they you know other assets that they own uh, this is a really slippery slope that I am, you know, loath to recommend that we have city uh, departments trying to administer. Uh, Whereas I, I am sympathetic to the many people in Northampton with trust funds, or actually not terribly sympathetic. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't um, be. <laughs> I think that I, I'm not actually going there yet. I'm just suggesting uh, has the, or asking, has, has this been considered in any way? Uh, I would think it would also raise kind of equal protection concerns. Um, what does, you know, um, you know, the idea here is to discourage people from not moving their car in snow emergencies. And there's, and so I, I understand the, the concept, but I do have concerns about it. And, you know, how much information do you, would you require for, for something like this? But I, I don't know. I'm just asking the question, has it been considered? Um, and why, why, why? I mean, I understand the arguments that make it complicated to consider, but it just seems to be sort of the, the obvious issue. I think this has come up before. Talk about the, the false alarms, you know, how they're um, progressive. And also, you know, identifying or identifying if there are certain areas of town that are disproportionately um, receiving parking tickets. I mean, if we could um, find a way to like selectively alleviate um, by by enforcing less, perhaps, um, you know, certain ordinances for those areas, I think that would be helpful. I mean, otherwise, I'm. I, I feel very supportive of this idea of maybe waiving the first, the first offense. The you know for the tow. Um, uh, having a lot more community education around the towing. Mm -hmm. As long as the city councilors on on this committee are are assuring us that there will be a an appropriation to pay Ernie's uh, on behalf of all first toes. Uh, I don't have a problem with, you know, the, you know, the first, you know, a, a get out of jail free card on the first toe, just like on the alarms. Um, but, you know, that would be for everyone, not, 
you know, this, that would be a little different than what Jeff was suggesting. You know what, Jim, I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you at the planning board. Yeah. Was it brought up? Okay, I'm, I'm looking at what I heard Attorney Seawall talking about. This is occurring in some of the older, older areas of homes, apartments. Mm -hmm. Why isn't the owner sending the information, communicating and showing the transparency of where they should be parking when it's snowing. That would settle it. I, I don't get it. Because that owner doesn't have to provide parking for when it's snowing. But can't they advise and tell them there could be a problem, Attorney Seawall, and give them suggestions of where to park? I mean, I have a lot of friends in Northampton and I own apartments up here in Florence also. And they let them know exactly where they can park and where they cannot park. So I don't know. Council, yeah. I, I, I do agree that there's a communication issue that's often embedded in this. Um, of these sort of complaints, I've, there's been one where I don't know, it was three, four years ago, somebody was on Pleasant Street and they were visiting town. They were visiting a friend and then they got towed. Well, in that case, you know, all right, you're from out of town, you don't, you, you don't know what's going on. But more often than not, it, it's a miss that, it, it's a resident who's not having the information that they need to move their car because that conversation doesn't seem to have occurred you know, when they signed the lease. And um, I, yeah, it, as somebody from New England, we all know it's like, hey, when it snows, you need to think about this, you know? So, um, yes, I- They need to get the reverse 911 on their phones. I mean, it's not as though we don't actually inform of snow emergencies, we do. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure whether there are all, you know, other uh, avenues of communication that ought to be utilized, but you know, we do put out the reverse 911 when there's you know, parking bans. Mm -hmm. And I have to agree, Councillor Nash. I have great concerns about the fee. I mean, it's a lot of money. And if there are new people moving in and say in the areas where our attorney Seawald is talking about, and they're not giving the direction about where they should be parking and have to pay a fee like that. Some people cannot afford that. That other $50 could be used for food for their home and for their families or whatever. And I, I don't know, I think if it's a first offense, then there shouldn't be a fee. That's my feelings. Mm -hmm. To me, that's educating you of, no, this cannot happen here. This is where you should go. I don't know. So this has ever... been going on forever, forever. As long as I've been a counselor, I have heard this happen. Yeah. So, is, uh, and I think it's our job to try to find a way to help the families that are coming in or whoever to understand and get that educational part of it, of where they can park and don't park. Mm -hmm. And to me, there's no reasons why owners or even who's in charge of written the apartment to give that information to avoid a family or a person who cannot afford that kind of money. A lot of people would say, ah, $50 is not that much. Yes, it is. It's a lot of money. And I, I think we should look at that very, very carefully. Right. The, um... The, the commenter who came said that the $200 fine was a third of her rent. Um, and so, yeah, $50 is a lot of money for a lot of people. Yes, um, but there's an issue of like both like in making sure that people are fully informed about what, you know, what the practices are here, but and also having options for them to move their cars to during the snow yeah. emergencies. I mean, if they're 
So we have to work on both or the counselors right. in the city have to work on both those issues. We, we do have a snow emergency lot. Yeah. They're not accessible for a lot right. It's it. We just don't have them all over the city, and we, they're not really accessible in all of A and you know and urban A and I mean B and C. That's yeah. the problem. Um, so, but you know, the then the problem becomes those snow emergency lots also need to be plowed, and so yeah. if there were an easy solution to this, I think we would have. Not an easy one. <laughs> no, it's not an easy solution. Yeah. So. You know. So I have a suggestion. I I, I'm, I want to take the input that you guys have given me. I want to put it into some sort of report recommendation that I submit back to you, and then um, and then we can figure out which bucket we're going to put it in. And uh, Attorney Seawald can doctor it up in any way he wants to. And um, oh no, I will doctor it up in the way you want me to. Uh, okay, all right, um, whatever. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and I'll bring that next week. Are people comfortable with that? Sure. Yes. And I'll, also in the meantime, I'll check in with Councillor Foster around ideas. And also, um, what was it? Oh, just slipped my mind. What was it? Oh, it was such a good point. <laughs> All right. It'll, it'll come back to me once the meeting's over. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, so, so there's the other part I want to go through real quick, and I think this might be quicker, please, I hope. All right, here we go. Um, so uh, proposal to expand notification. So um, I, I ran through the, the lead up to the discussion you know, how, how we, how I arrived to bringing that matter to them, uh, my discussions with Councillor Shara, my discussions with um, Attorney Seawald, and that, um, that, so discussion crossed between notification for permit applications and zoning map changes. Um, Carolyn shared how the yellow signs placed at the, the site of project has worked effective, effectively, which I think is true. She also shared that uh, folks asking for better notification are often making this statement at a hearing, which I know is kind of funny, but um, <laughs> so they obviously heard about it in some way. They just hadn't heard uh, through uh, the mail or directly from the city. Um, so um, ideas shared by the planning board. Um, these two had to do with mailings. One had develop, one idea was to develop a certified abutter list for per, permit applications to access for zoning notification. In other words, like just have this general certified list that you could then plug into, you plug in the parameters into it and it would kick out the actual names of folks uh, within the the whatever the buffer zone is that you define around a project. The other idea was to develop a mailing list for residents that were not based on individual names, but just addresses with the idea of, you know, you send it to resident at 18 Montview or 40 Smith Street or whatever, you don't that we actually don't need to get into the actual um, naming of the resident if we're informing them. Um, uh, member, planning board member Marissa Elkins uh, was strongly approved of, of uh, attorney Seawald's position that um, we not put this into an ordinance because it, it, it would, it would, um, uh, it would make things difficult for the city if um, notification hadn't happened in a proper way and could throw the hear whole hearing process off. Mm -hmm. um, that um, the idea of increasing the use of, of listservs for notifications and um, also 
again, seasonal message, messaging around zoning changes. Um, that there seems to, we seem to have a zoning season that, you know, that we could possibly consider like with the snow emergencies that we get out the message, you know, rather than the exact hearing dates, we just let people know this spring, here's what you, if you're interested in two family by right or tiny houses or uh, affordable housing, it's coming down the pike, watch for it this spring. Um, so there was that idea. Um, possible actions. Uh, the mayor could issue an executive order. So this is, this is, this is moving back from uh, the, the threshold of, of having an ordinance um, and in relates to discussions we had in this committee, or maybe it was just between me and attorney Seawalt. The mayor could issue an executive order for courtesy notifications to be sent to abutters and residents when there are zone changes. Um, since it's coming from the mayor as a courtesy, it wouldn't have the, um, the, the weight of being an ordinance and, um, and would fall pretty much like having the yellow signs. But that would be up to the mayor whether or not the mayor wanted to implement that. And um, the other thought here, um, to develop a mailing list for residents where individual names are not used or needed, where notices are sent to the resident. Um, so this, uh, this, is, this idea is to you know, lessen the burden. So it's a courtesy notice. It's just sent to the re resident of whatever the address is. It can be a postcard. And um, the last variation on that is, uh, all right, I don't have anything else there. Okay, so, uh, so the idea here would be to ask the executive to look into this and, um, oh, and also that to pull out the, um, the issue of notification around planning board permit applications, that can fall on the project developer, the cost of that and the need to, to carry that out. And that's kind of the, the policy right now that, um, that developers for a uh, special permit and, uh, and site plan are supposed to make those communications with, uh, with neighbors and hold meetings in the case of special permit. No, that's not right. That's not right. That's false. That is um, false. Did I say that yeah. before and you called me out on this? Yes, no. Uh, yeah. Under the law, the planning department or the city itself has to send out the notice to a butters and a butters within uh, a butters to a butters within 300 feet. The developer, the applicant, pays the you know the cost of that, That's and right. you know I suppose we could add a little bit more to the okay, to the yeah, application yeah. fee, but right. and if it's a courtesy notice, we could require the developer to do it. But the actual notice. The statutory required notice is sent by the by the city, and it has to be. There's case law to that effect going back to the 1920s. So, yeah. Thank I you. Mean, you. Corrected me on this before, <laughs> Attorney Because I, I had my hand up because I knew that was not correct. Yeah, it, well, it, I it didn't sink in, but I did correct you before. But yeah, well, you know, it'll just take one more time, and then I'll get it. <laughs> You're not going to get another chance. <laughs> We bought our property, our land, our lawyers handled it all. The city, Allen's absolutely correct. Our lawyers went and sent out information past the 200 feet. We went way beyond. So there's ways of respect of doing any kind of a hearing. But he's absolutely correct. You know, and I will say that this all began as map changes and not, uh, not you know, hearing notices. Uh, correct. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Well, it, it, it got a little, um, well, Expanded. So it did begin as map changes and then it evolved into the, once we start talking about abutters, we're talking about abutters in situations where there's residents who live in B2, 
the properties owned by those abutters. Right. And, it, and that the, the goal where the overall goal here is to let all residents know whether they're property owners or are renters within a within the, the notification zone. Right. So, but of course, the problem was we don't know who the renters are because we don't have any renter registration like Amherst does. Right. Right. But if we did send something to apartment Resident. A, we I think we I, I think that would satisfy me in that way. So right. Um, Go in with a flyer and hang it up. I'm sorry. What? Just go into the apartments by the doors, put a flyer there and hang it up. Hey, there's a meeting coming up. Yeah, but the thing is, Councillor Nash is doing too much of that. <laughs> I know what it's all about. I did 1,800 of them. I, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, oh, and Councillor Labarge is pointing to the problem right now that in information, the, the way the information often gets to these people for zoning map changes is us and that we there are times where we hear about things after the fact yeah. and both Councillor Labarge and I s share the, the the view that we'd rather have talk to people on their doorsteps rather than have them yelling at us from the podium so <laughs> that's true yeah it is <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so anyway that that's my report on the planning board stuff um and um, I, again, with that, I'd like to type something up and, and, and bring it to our next meeting. Is there anything you think I should add or? No, I want to thank you, Councilor Nash. Thank you, Councilor Nash. Very good presentation. That was OK. okay. But I, I will say this. I, I am backing down from this position of we need an ordinance to uh, insert this language to make sure this happens. I, I'm sure there's. You know, it looks like there's other avenues, and that's what I, I, I want us to be recommending as we go forward. Yep. But I've wrung every bit of ordinance out of this idea. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Councillor Nash. Thank you. Thank you. So, before we move on, Laura, can you bring that screen back up again? I just like to. We're going to scroll down to the bottom, the last ordinance, just for brief discussion. I know we talked to Attorney Seawall. This is the, um, the general sign regulation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, Attorney Seawall, we never made a recommendation on this, correct? Well, no, there was a vote not to refer or recommend with an explanation that I've explained that this is something that's already was um, discussed uh, among Carolyn in, the, in planning, uh, council president and myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we've had fits and starts on this, as I said earlier, uh, this is laden with more politics than you can uh, you know, uh, you might think at first blush, uh, as I said, you know, there are those who just want people to have as many signs on their front yard as, as they want, as large as they want. Um, and there are those who want to limit for aesthetic reasons, uh, how, and then there are concerns about safety, distance from property lines, whether they flash or they don't flash, uh, whether they change or they don't change. Those are the kinds of um, issues that need to be worked through. And I'm, you know, um, so uh, I did want to, I did want the council to know that this was raised and, and uh, that there's a recommendation that, that the city proceed to, um, uh, you know, prepare a new and updated um, sign ordinance. So, but I'm not really sure beyond that, you know, I, I, as I said earlier, maybe it goes into a, a study column. Uh, I, I, appreciate that. 
So instead of not recommending it, I mean, maybe we could recommend it, but with further study? No? Is that your head okay. take? <laughs> that sounds good to me. Are you, are you asking me? Yes, Attorney <laughs> Seal, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that could definitely go into that column. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm, yes. I'm asking um, um, if we can get a motion to move this, you know, out of the not recommend bucket, but put it into the recommend bucket um, for further study. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Councilor Barge, seconded. Anyone? Second. By Member Peck, thank you. Um, any further discussion on this? Nope. Laura, roll call please on moving this forward to, um, for further, to put this into the bucket to uh, Councilor recommending Barge, it. Yes. Thank you. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Member Peck. Yes. And Member Napolitano. Yes. Okay. Now, moving on, discussion of matters referred to the planning board. Jim, you already did a discussion on this? Yep, that's okay. all done. <laughs> you don't want me to do it again. <laughs> don't, want you, don't want you saying anything else. So and Then there was the commercial puffer zone. That's the only other one that I think was not, that was one that Councilor Jarrett brought forward. So we should go back then and look at the, and make a recommendation for a further. According to, at last meeting, Councilor Nash said he was going to further study that. And I have a brief update. Okay. I have asked, so that um, Commissioner Flagg has said that the his interpretation of the, of the uh, zoning, the way it's written, is that um, that this can be enforced in any zone? There is resident or no noise ordinance can be enforced in any zone that there are residents. So um, I I sent him an email oh late last week asking for him to clarify that in writing, you know, because <laughs> Councilor Jarrett and I want to be able to say, all right, do we really have this right? And um, because if if uh, the commissioner thinks it's clear to him and that um, and it does kind of match with the way I read it, then we can convey to residents that this is already in place and that we don't need a new ordinance. So that's that's where it stands. What are you talking about, Councilor? Time involvement on noise level or what? I don't get it, the So the, the noise ordinance uh, is... Um, that you can't start until seven o'clock in the morning and end at 10 o'clock at night. Yes. It's but the point. thing is, does it apply to general business or to central business? And both of those zones could have residential housing. And that, um, that I think my prior thoughts on this were that oh, central business, people are allowed to show up at four in the morning and empty dumpsters. Yeah. And that, um, that according to um, the way Commissioner Flagg is, 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 is uh, reading this, then no, that's not allowed. So, um, and, then, and then if that's the case, then we just need to let the haulers know they can't go showing up. What I've, what I've found when I've had these complaints, if I reach out to the haulers, it, it, you know, within a week or two, the problem goes away. Uh -huh. It's just that a driver doesn't know our, our ordinance. So, um, so if we can get clarity on it, then we can share that information. And um, I think we're good. I unless the attorney, unless the city solicitor thinks we need to step this up and make things a little bit clearer. I think so too. I'm trying to find the ordinance. I'm not succeeding. Where's Laura? She didn't find it. Building regulations. Is it listed on that spreadsheet what the number is? No, I looked there. 
I thought oh, it would be in peace and good Laura. order, but. Laura, he's looking for. Yeah, some... yeah, I did. And I looked on the spreadsheet myself and didn't realize it was missing until this moment. So I'm going to look too in general, uh, in the ordinance. Well, I'm not going to look at the spreadsheet. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, maybe the whole thing is just on the spreadsheet. It's on the spreadsheet, but there's um, no. It is, but not not the citation of the. Not the citation the though. So verse. that's what we're gonna, you know. Right. Noise control. Three twelve dash twenty five. Yeah. Oh, Meg. Yes. I was just getting there, Meg. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> well, the question is, what does a residential zone mean? It says the following activities shall not take place in any residential zone. Um, so, you know, if you're in an industrial zone or a commercial zone um, and you abut a residential zone, you're not in a residential zone. So I would be interested in seeing Commissioner Flagg's interpretation of this. I'd like to see it too. So then possibly we do need to look at this. Yeah, but what are you going to do, split up the buildings? <laughs> no, but you know, the problem becomes, um, you know, number one, how is any hauler going to know, exactly. you know, if you, if you create a, a 200 foot buffer next to any residential zone in a commercial zone, how are they going to know what zone they're in? They're not. They, they, they don't even and, know what zone they're in to start out with. Exactly. So. And, and they don't know how far from the residential zone. Uh, uh, you know, you, we might be, and, and the question is, is now we're, we're regulating based on zoning districts, apparently. Mm -hmm. We got enough of and so why would this not be in the zoning ordinance? Right. So uh, not sure we're quite there, but I would like to see something. I, I'd like to know how, uh, um, how, how the commissioner is interpreting this. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll resend my email and why don't I loop you in, Attorney Seawald? That would be good. I'd appreciate that. That would be great. All right. So we'll take no action on that right now. And we're going to move down to the presentation and discussion of first draft of the final report. Laura, could you bring up the first draft? Has everyone had a chance to read this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Councilor Thorpe, or excuse me, I was just going to make the small note that um, I changed the wording, entered an order, because it was actually just a vote. They didn't have an order to um, extend the date. So yep. it Thank you. Good, it's okay. Fine with me. <laughs> okay. Discussion, members. Laura, is this the version that I 
sent to you today? No, sure. That's in my email inbox. I did not um, add it. So I, I was going to screen share it separately. Should I have Megan's. Yep. I think you emailed it to all of us. Right. I don't think I received it. No, did I really not? Oh, dear. It was my intention to send it to everybody. Hmm. Um, should I screen share it? If you could. Sure. Okay. When you get a chance, not now, Laura, but if you would send it to me, that would be yes, great. Yes, of course. Please do. Jim, did you not get it either? I, you know, I'm looking through a, and I, I'm not, I don't think I'm seeing it. It was a lunch hour project, so probably around 1.30 today. I got three of them. You probably got mine. <laughs> I wonder if I send it to somebody else with the same initials. Yeah, but they're different. Yeah, I don't know if I saw this. Yeah, I, I don't see it in here. Um, I got hers. Pulling up my scent to see who I did send it to. Let's see. Oh, I'm pretty sure that I got this. Okay, to um, Jim Nash, John Thorpe, Council of the Barge, Attorney Seawald, Member Napolitano, and Member Peck. Yeah. yeah. I got them. I, I definitely At did 120, not. 126 today. That's really strange. It, um, it's acwald at northamptonma.gov. So maybe it didn't go to the right. No, that, that should have. Uh, I, I'm just going to look at my junk box right now. Hmm. Nope. This is the first I'm seeing it. Sending it now. Great. Oh, I apologize. I did get it. Didn't see it. Did not see it. Okay. I did. I did. I, my apologies, Laura. Why aren't I seeing my, it? Okay. Slip in all the time. I know. We get so many from you, Laura. <laughs> and it's in a bigger thread, I think. It's in an 11. Sometimes you don't see the things that come later in a thread. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so I can't. Okay, see. I think I'm looking at it now. Okay. Shh, go away. Oh, oh God, here we go. <laughs> Is everybody able to see it on other devices so that I shouldn't keep sharing it? Yes, I, I can. Okay. Yeah. Here is it, here it is, okay.
So Megan, all of the stuff in red is your ads, right? Green. Yeah, I shifted one section. It's in green? And my screen, it's green. Oh. I'm not sure which document I have there. Wait, there's that. Okay, so again, the section that's not spaced, like the rust, that's my addition. So what is the name of this document? Is it first draft or is it ordinance review? Summary amended. Summary amended. Is everybody working off of a document called summary amended? What's this one say? Summary, okay. All right, and mine's red, okay. <laughs> Not coming up on mine. Okay, and so the language we're looking at is on page two to three. Yes. Bottom of one going on to one. two is what I have. Oh, on one going on to two, and then there's also it looks like there's more on page two, two going on to three. Yeah. Okay. Megan, did you also do any revisions to the Exhibit A? Not today. Oh, okay. Since we just received it last night. Yeah, apologize, but it was uh, always takes longer than you think it will. Looks like our meeting was going to run long anyway, so I thought it would probably be pushed to the 22nd. And then we can also look at Councillor Nash's drafts. And also exhibit B, which would be the housekeeping changes and exhibit C I'll have the next meeting, uh, which would be further study. So we've lost um, our chair. There you go. Uh, I don't see Councillor Thorpe. Well, that makes Megan the chair now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <He's the power. laughs> so, what um, should we? I'll, I'll text him and. Oh, he's coming back. He's oh. back. Okay. There he is. I told you I have internet problems here. It's hey, Megan was in charge for all of 30 seconds and everything's done, man. You almost had a You're coup. You were in great hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's hope that doesn't happen again. So I have a question for um, Member Peck that um, so in, in the, the draft that you've sent us, I, I, I like the language that you've, you've added. You also, it looks, did you cross out 
that paragraph as well? Uh, it's at the top of page two. Uh, it shifted to the very end. It should be at the end. It should be at the end of. Yeah, she moved it. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. All right. Okay. Thank you for these changes. It's a definite improvement. Um, Do we need to vote for these changes or? I, I, I would suggest that we discuss them and, um, you know, perhaps we will vote on all of the documents in, a, in the final meeting in their final form because it could change again. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, because I'll add some language to this about what will be exhibit three, which is the summary, I mean, the uh, further study. So if I may suggest, maybe we just defer final approval of any of these documents to the, to the meeting after next and we'll have them in all in final form. Okay. Should I incorporate the changes into the master version though, that we're gonna have these changes like as we go along? Right. Well, that's up to the committee. Okay. Can we do that? Just leave the changes in red. Are there, does anybody else have changes um, to the original document? No. I am good with this, with the changes. Me too. So do we wanna make a motion to accept the, the changes, you know, like, lock this in as a particular draft? Uh, perhaps we should include the, uh, the dates and numbers that, uh, that uh, Laura inserted into the updated version that doesn't have Meg's changes. Right. At least she's not a dog. What's that supposed to mean? It says a cat meowing. I oh, was no, I... <laughs> but I meant that it would be a lot louder if it were a dog. No. I have what I call a Zoom dog who every time I get on Zoom starts barking his head off. <laughs> uh, so I didn't mean to, to insult anybody's pet. I have a dog. We, we, I love we my just, dog. Uh, we just got a husky about a month ago. And it's oh, a nice. type of noise that he makes. But we're very fond of it. <laughs> Sorry, but be careful. Is there like a standard for, um, you know, uh, revisions in, a, in a, a public document? Like, is it verboten to use, you know, word track changes or using, you know, colors to represent dates that things were changed on or something like that? I, I defer to Laura or whoever. From this, no, that not at all. Places. Do it all the time in council. So, I was wondering if we were going to add anything more to this report other than the exhibits A, B, and C, which um, do we need a, oh, so this is uh, this executive summary. Do we need any sort of introduction? Um, just, just referring back to what Councillor Jarrett said and you know, a number of other councillors here have also noted that, um, you know, contextualizing our work is important. Um, but I feel like the value we add mostly is just 
it is the background work for ordinances because we're not here to to craft or to go really do deep dives into any of them. Um, there are, you know, various um, often um, misconstrued definitions and um, ideas that I would like to kind of clarify in our report. I feel, um, you know, the latest report that came out, I think the resilience and what is that um, report, they started with a definition. I just pulled it up. Definitions of resiliency and, hold on. In the same way, I feel like we actually should somewhere talk about what an ordinance is. And I know there's a perfectly legal dictionary definition, but you know, um, many people misunderstand <laughs> what that is. I mean, we've had visitors to our meetings who um, who conflate that with you know uh, executive actions or um, you know board um, priorities and. It's so I, I think it's important to actually just clarify those things somewhere in our report. Hopefully at the start. Oh, I interrupted. Or remember Napolitano wanted to say something. Okay. All right. Um my I've been trying to I, I have people around that I'm trying to keep quiet. Uh, yeah, just given that we um, we had the discussion ourselves about like what is, what isn't an ordinance. I think that's useful to clarify and define in the, in the, in the document. Um, and probably most importantly, what an ordinance isn't. Yeah. Yeah. If I may, um, you know, I guess that's a question that uh, the first question is, to whom is this report directed and for whose benefit? Mm -hmm. um, you know, my understanding of this is that this is directed to the city council and the mayor, that these are ordinances that you should be developing or not developing. And, um, and I don't have an, I really don't have an objection. The reason I didn't start that way is because I'm assuming that the, the, the target audience for this report um, uh, knows what a, know what an, or, uh, an ordinance is and what it isn't. Um, so, uh, but you know, your committee and uh, I have no pride of authorship here. If somebody wants to add or, I, or wants me to add the definition of an ordinance, I'm I'm happy to do that. But that's why it's not in there, and you didn't see it in the charter report and the earlier ordinance review committee reports because it is directed to this to the city council and, and the mayor. Well, I think actually we should take a broader view. We are a, we're a five-year committee and um, next time something like this comes together will be at least 2025. And, you know, we're, we shouldn't be really just limited to what um, seems feasible, the cast of characters right now in March, 2021. Um, you know, this city government, uh, government is changing. Um, It'll look very different this time next year, I hope. Um, and I just, uh, I feel like there are a lot of things that we, issues we touch upon that are just really valuable as community education. And I, I don't think we, I just don't think we should limit ourselves. I mean, um, you know, count in, you know, Council of Large are, uh, esteemed counselor of you know several decades here she wanted at some point you to clarify what really is meant by affordable talk about affordable housing um, because people also conflate you know the subsidized of you know affordable subsidized housing with market rate affordable housing and those are just those are also important points, because they're also relevant to our 
recommendations. Okay, um, so if it requires someone to draft this, I guess we'll take a shot at it. Any other? Yeah, Councillor Nash. Councillor yeah. Nash, thank you, Megan. Member Peck, I, I would love it if you took a shot at it. Your writing skills are are, are very strong. Um, I think that um, what you're suggesting here is, yes, I, so we are reporting to the mayor and council who under, have a better understanding of what it is that we're doing here. But, the, you know, the hope is that maybe the paper picks up on it and that um, people interested in this are going to want to read the report and um, and having a little additional information to guide them through it is a really good idea um, because uh, it'll also give them an idea. I, I, I thought that was interesting around the, the term affordability. Yeah, we spend a lot of time defining that while we talk about what afford affordable housing is. We almost always have to step back, define it, and, and kind of framing how, you know, those were the steps that were needed as we were going through all of these, these different ideas. Um, I, I think that's, I trust that you will come up with something uh, that is uh, effective and uh, will not be, um, that, that'll, that will fit in with attorney Seawald uh, his goal of us, you know, of us bring, being fairly brief as well, mm -hmm. so. Oh, and I mean, thank you for the compliment, but I, it's, <laughs> I'm not offering because I, I relish the extra work. I really, I'm quite painfully aware that I'm one of the two um, resident volunteers on this committee. That's not an elected official that's not on the city's payroll and doing this. <laughs> um, you could be. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, this. Um, so should we actually submit this to Laura as we draft things. So, I mean, I would hate to just um, have this pile up on, you know, this Sunday or Monday before our meeting again and have to spend the few hours left we have reading through things. What? So I, you know, I would love to team up on writing this and that the thing is that our, the, the numbers in this committee make it so that we can't, you know, like work together on, I, that would actually be one of the best ways to do it. It's the, it's, we've already seen evidence of that in this meeting about how people team up on stuff and it improves the, the quality. So, um, but I think we're kind of doomed to have somebody suggest stuff and then we parse it out in a meeting like this. Isn't that right, Attorney Seawald? Is he muted? He's yeah. agreeing with me. He's agreeing. Sorry. It works for me. Okay. But we can't go and meet. Two of, two of the members can't meet um, to draft something to bring to the committee. Well, if the committee is sending out two members to, uh, to draft, then it would be a, a subcommittee and you'd have to meet in public. You have to post your meetings. And it needs to be posted two days ahead of time. Right. So it, we could certainly not charge the two of you. Uh, the committee could not charge the two of you um, uh, to be a subcommittee or to, you know, to uh, undertake this task on behalf of the committee. That's, but that's not the same thing as two people taking it upon themselves to share information because it's not a quorum of the committee. I, I wouldn't know when to schedule a subcommittee meeting anyway. I mean, this is <laughs> done at three in the morning. Uh, you know, next Friday, I have no idea when I'm gonna find the time, but 
it will be done and it will be shared with you as far in advance as possible of the meeting. To that, I say thank you. And I will make myself available at any time convenient for you if you need any help in thinking through this, because you know it's something that I've lived with, and it's probably why it didn't occur to me to do uh, to actually do that, because um, you know. I'm, so anyway, um, let me know if you need any help with that. Everyone is frozen on my screen, so I don't know who would like to. Still? No, no one's hand is raised, Thank just you. so you know. <laughs> okay. We want to move on to Exhibit A. Thumbs up from Jeff. Okay. Laura, you want to pull that? Oh, up? I'm sure. Green chair, sure. Okay. Oh, oh, Thank you. Is that open for discussion or I yeah, it's a lot of silence. So weird. Okay. Megan? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be staring because I have to look at it on my own screen. So my sense is like, I would just rather, I would like to um, kind of enrich these recommendations more. I um, thought we had a, Really good discussion about the two families in the last meeting. And, you know, I would like to include um, like a, a summary of what we thought were the strengths of this set of ordinances, um, why we're kind of recommending these with reservations, and then the other two. Um, very enthusiastically. Um, I mean, there were, so I'm, I'm not sure I want to um, discuss them here now without anything in writing, but just generally, I would like to kind of bolster these recommendations a little bit more. Um, keeping in mind, we don't want a 70 page report um, yeah, but just a number of things that, you know, were mentioned about, you know, the, the housing cyclical, um, the fact that, you know, um, low stock of houses are driving up costs, um, there's, um, when things uh, turn, there would we would have a stock of smaller housing house that become less expensive. We want to be ready when the market adjusts. The de demand for um, the the larger, more luxurious houses tend to be are, are probably temporary. Um, we, you know, really do. Um, but there's a possibility of the 
um, building of the uh, houses with the shared walls, which um, increase affordability and efficiency and the flexibility of the structure for, for rentals. And um, so just pulling a few things that members have said, dur said during the last meeting, um, I feel like we could kind of strengthen these recommendations a bit. Um, and that would in essence be our, our review. Um, So pretty much what, um, I'm sorry, what um, Councilor Jarrett had brought up earlier about the broader discussion around the context, the, the impacts. Um, right. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Any other members? Well, I, I will, make a point of reviewing these for next times with that question that Councillor Jarrett raised, you know, and, and what Megan is speaking to here that, um, yeah, how can we, yeah, how can we enhance these? Councillor Barge, you're frozen, but I don't know if you have your hand up. I just wanna. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Attorney Seawold, any comment? Um, I, I just want to go back to the, uh, and th that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to review and, and again, I'm not, I'm not uh, I was sort of guided by the ordinance for ordinance review, uh, 1.15.1, which uh, calls for two things, a report summarizing the committee's recommendation and any proposed revision of the ordinances of the city contained therein. So, um, so uh, I, I I thought that um, though just I'm just telling you the way I approach it, and this and this committee can approach it differently, uh, was that uh, um, you would be appearing before the council to explain uh, exactly why you did what you did, or why you recommended what you recommended, and uh, that we would, and you know maybe we you you might recommend further study of of the ordinance about ordinance review, that it needs to be uh, more robust than what's in, what's in there now. But uh, that's sort of what was guiding me. And um, so that's why I made brief recommendations, but I'm happy to, to look at, uh, or uh, look at anything you wanna add, it's fine. Just curious, what would the presentation before the council be like? I mean, so well, the charter review or? It would be whatever uh, you decide it to be. Uh, I would, uh, mm -hmm. I think that in the past we've had, you know, a little bit more explanation of exactly why, you know, the, the committees did what they did and what their deliberative, deliberative process was. Mm -hmm. And that was not necessarily set out in the report, but. It's fine. We have about a dozen ordinances. Do you think there would be interest in hearing the rationale behind our recommendation for each one of them or more just um, explanation of, of our process? So let me ask the counselors. It's really something um, that okay. better addressed to the counselors. Oh, I think other counselors will be interested in um, getting a, an overview of how we arrived at these recommendations. I, I imagine a lot of the housekeeping stuff will look very familiar to them and that um, you know, we can describe them as such and, um, and we can hopefully move on in about you know, maybe you know, five, 10 minutes of the presentation. But then getting into the weeds of you know, what our, our charge was, uh, around um, folks who've been marginalized and that, um, that, you know, how did we, I think they're gonna be very interested in knowing how, how we probed around in that. And, and also I think that they're gonna wanna know how come we're not coming up with huge changes, <laughs> you know? And I think that, um, and I think that's a fair question and that, um, 
that I, and I think it would be good for us to to walk through that. Um, right. And I wonder too, in the report, do we want to talk about how we can we set our parameters? Um, and you know, the fact that we were limited by the six months of our existence. Um, and guided by what was really um, came to us across the transom. So we really, we didn't really have any control over what we received at any given meeting. Um, I don't know. Or is that something we could just, um, could be just part of the real presentation? Yeah. I think that's in, in, inherent in all of these reviews because they're all six month reviews. The reason we went to March 31st is because, you know, you got a late appointment, but uh, you know, the, the uh, I believe it's the charter that says you get appointed by July 1st and, and file your decision by December, you know, your report by December 31st. So that's, you know, kind of the limited nature of, of this process and all the review processes. Mm -hmm. So and that's why every one of them has picked a very narrow focus, including yours, and uh, you know had the housekeeping changes, but had a narrow focus because there's just no way in six months you can really tackle the entire code of ordinances. Um, so, um, okay. but again, this is your report. So whatever the, the committee uh, decides is, is what will be. Okay. So can I'd like to make a motion to end the meeting. Well, I, I'd just like to add one more thing, mm -hmm. which is that um, that the investigation we're doing that we started here needs to keep going, that scrutiny needs to be the lens that we were bringing to the, the matters before us needs to continually be brought up in, in, in all of uh, the, 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 uh, the legislation that comes to council. And that, um, you know, like uh, attorney Seawald was saying that there's, there's what, I, I think there's 800 pages of ordinance in on the city web website you know and we've probably looked at maybe 30 40 you know and ourselves then carolyn with her addition probably ties in another you know 30 or 40 pages you know that there's still a lot to do there and i think that that would be you know that there's an ongoing recommendation to be thoughtful and mindful as we go forward all right, now we can end the meeting. <laughs> and and that that you know, considering these historically marginalized communities is not something that the ordinance review committee sh should do exclusively, but that should be right. the mindset of councilors and the mayor going forward. And you know, I kind of tried to put in a sentence or two about that uh, for the mayor, but you know, it could be added that councilors should be mindful of this as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, thank you. We adjourn the meeting. All right, I'll second it. <laughs> I have nothing more to say. Okay. <laughs> Roll call. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Member Peck. Yes. And Member Napolitano. Yes. Thank you all.